What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Pigeons 420. I hope you guys are well and warm. Kicking and fly today, baby, because it's Friday. And boy, do we have stuff to talk about today. Wanted to get into a conversation that I feel, well, died a long time ago, but for some reason, in corners of the internet, it still persists. And that is, why are we still using high-intensity display? Whether that's ceramic metal halide, metal halide, or high-pressure sodium, I don't think that you should be using them. I think it's a waste of time, energy, and money. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing why you need to toss them out. First and foremost, I strongly believe that HID is old technology. For many, many moons, that was the light of choice by many, many gardeners. However, the times have changed. I even remember arguing on behalf of high intensity diode back at about 2010, 2011, 2012, because at the time, HID was far more efficient. The blurple, weak, non-penetrating LEDs that we had at the time weren't doing the job sufficiently. And not to mention, they were way overpriced. So having an argument in regards to HID versus LED wasn't in question. HID was the superior technology. LEDs have come a long way. And in that time, the conversation and argument for HID has dissipated. It's not there anymore. Why are people still using HID? Well, one of those reasons is, well, it's hard to break old habits. Some places have been fit with full HID systems. We're talking warehouses, we're talking gardens, grow rooms, they're done, it's already there. And to change, well, it would be very costly and quite timely of a process to just completely change an entire operation. However, there are a number of people out there that strongly believe that if you're operating in a climate that is not to the hottest or in the warmest of climates, then use HID. It's going to fill that space with a little bit of heat. That way, you don't have to spend the time, you know, artificially heating it with some like heaters or so on and so forth. Next, some people argue that the price of HID is just not comparable to that of LEDs. It's still in the favor of HIDs. For just a couple hundred bucks, you can go grab yourself a thousand watt HID or an, H an HPS system, and that's gonna run you through your entire flower stage. Is it effective? We're gonna dive in. But before we do dive in, I want to give a huge shout out to the channel's sponsors. I would not be able to create content like this every single week if it wasn't for our sponsors. A huge shout out to AC Infinity. These guys are changing the game. They just recently released or are releasing a humidifier that hooks up to your controller 69. Talk about listening to the community and responding. This is something that I've been asking for for a while and I can't wait to get my hands on it. If you see anything on acinfinity.com that you like, consider using promo code PIGEONS420. You'll save a few dollars off at Checo and you'll help support the show. Another huge shout out to Spider Farmer. Conversation around LEDs is one that I know that I've been in favor of for a long time and Spider Farmer has got you covered in the tent. They've got the SE series. I personally use the SE7. Thousand. You can use the SE5000 and a, an array of products under their belt. You head over to spiderfarmer.ca, use promo code PIGEONS5, or use the Amazon links below and check their stuff out and save a few dollars off on checkout. Thank them for being a sponsor of today's video. So thank you to them. Let's talk about why you should stop using HID. So you don't have a whole lot of money, you want to get started into growing, and you're trying to decide what light is perfect for you. You check out Amazon and you see that there's a, a HPS system with a metal halide for less than 200 bucks. You want it. You love it. You want some more of it. The problem is, is that that upfront cheap cost is going to be tacked on at the end. The energy that is used by that HPS or that HID is being transformed into heat. 
Those bulbs are totally inefficient. Rather than harnessing the energy into light and into a spectrum and blasting it down on your plants, so much of that energy is transferred into heat. That heat needs to be dissipated. It needs to be taken care of. And then you need to combat it with like an air conditioning system or more fans, more ventilation, when ideally LED doesn't give off a whole lot of heat. It does give off some, but not nearly as much energy is wasted in converting the energy into light. So you're going to go look for a new light. You're looking for something that's cost effective. LEDs in 2022 have come a long way. The price for a decent LED well under a few hundred bucks. And this is a light that's going to get you from the beginning of your garden phase to the very end, from veg to flower and beyond. Why have three different bulbs? Why carry a ceramic metal halide? Why do you have a metal halide? Why do you have an HPS bulbs? You don't need those. They don't even cover an entire spectrum of those bulbs. That's why you need so many bulbs. For example, there is barely any blue in HPS, no blue spectrum. I think you got about 3% and you need a minimum of about seven to 9% blue to avoid any long stretching. And if you're growing indoors, stretching is not something that's ideal for your circumstance. It's simply the wrong spectrum. If you go with LEDs, you can get a full spectrum LED from red to blue. And HPS doesn't even have infrared. So you're missing out an entire spectrum of light. I often found that in order to combat the heat, as I had mentioned, I needed to use an air conditioning system. That air conditioning system was not cheap. As Soon as I got rid of the HPS lights, I implemented my LEDs. I actually traded in the air conditioning for a heater. And to run a little portable heater in your garden is far more efficient than having to run a full-sized air conditioner. Not to mention the space the space of having an air conditioner in your garden versus the space of a little portable heater. It's, it's insurmountable. HPS doesn't even have the full spectrum. You're missing blues, you're missing reds, and ideally you're going to want a little bit of everything. The energy cost of using an HPS or an HID is far more surmountable than using LED. They're just simply far more efficient diodes. Quit using something that's not working for you. And the overall cost at startup isn't even that much greater anymore. Getting a, a starter light is just a couple hundred bucks. That starter light is gonna get you from the beginning of veg to the end of flower. Don't spend a couple hundred bucks on an HID when in reality, you're gonna end up spending more money in energy costs, heating costs, and overall maintenance. Those bulbs blow out. They don't have the same kind of life that an LED has. So get the bang for your buck. Quit using HID. I understand there's a place, there's some warehouses that are still using old technology, but that's that old habits die hard. Sure, it would be a great uh, cost to, uh, to, to replace all of these lights right up front. However, in the long run, not only are you going to have more cost efficient operation. Not only are you going to have everything you need to grow incredible product, but you're going to get that incredible product for a price that's uncomparable. Guys, did I miss anything in regards to why you should be using HID? Should you not be using HID? What is your experience with HID? I kind of feel like we all started somewhere with HID. I know I did. And I remember I've seen how the conversation around LED has changed over the course of the last decade. What do you think? Are you using HPS or HID? I want to hear from you. Are you stuck in your ways? I want to hear. Uh, I, as somebody who, who understands that old habits die hard, I have a hard time getting out of old processes. Let me let me know. I want to hear from you. But guys, I appreciate you watching. Much love. And don't forget, if you would like to help support the show, if you go over to the merch store, you can go find the first King Pigeons tea. This shirt is sailing off the shelves. And I want to thank you guys for the love and support. This is by far the biggest and best drop we have ever had. If you want to check it out, check the links below. It'll be the top one. You can check it out. It'll be available for one more week. Thank you to everyone who has supported the show. Thank you to those that have hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to one hundred thousand subscribers. I can barely believe it myself. Will we have it by the end of the year? It's very well possible. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Have an incredible weekend. Much love. Stay medicated, eh? Because guess what? Life's better that way. Peace.